Welcome back to 52 Lockup. I am your Apple Teeny Cat Love Bit and Apple TV. 52 Lockup is a series I still talk about one of my biggest passion. True crime. A new episode on every cat maniac Monday for 52 Mondays, 52 Crimes. So I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to like, leave some feedback, subscribe, yada 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 yada. You know the deal. Right? Um, viewer discretion is always advised, but in this particular episode I will be showing uh clips of something. So let's get started. Uh, June 5th, 1993, Tyree Nichols would be born to his mother, Rovan Wells. Um, I don't have his father's name, um, but I do have his stepfather's name, uh, Rodney Wells, um, who I believe, I believe his father actually passed. But anyway, he was, Tyree would be the, the youngest of four children. Uh, he actually apparently got his name from the movie Silverado, <laughs> uh, according to his brother. Uh, while growing up in California, one of you know Tyree's uh, biggest passions was like skateboarding. He was a skater boy, um, and he had a deep, deep passion for photography. Uh, after graduating from high school, uh, he would you know move around a little bit until he decided to uh, settle in Memphis, Tennessee, um, to go back with his parents. Now he had a very loving and supportive relationship with his mother. Uh, apparently they were so close that he had a tattoo of her name on his arm. Uh, friends of Tyree, like his friend uh, Chris Volker, would describe Tyree as a happy-go-lucky kind of person and a free spirit. Um, you know, and besides having a tattoo of his mom's name, he also had a tattoo of a wolf uh, on his leg because he felt like that was his spirit animal. Like he was very spiritual, right? Uh, he was infamous for caring for other people first and then taking care of himself last. Um, he did have a significant other, I believe, in California prior to moving, uh, but the relationship did not, exactly, from what I understand, did not pan out the way that it, he intended. Um, but he still remained active in his four-year-old's life. Um, the separation from his um, former significant other um, kind of kept him preoccupied enough that he wasn't interested in dating anyone else. Um, not after uh, moving over to, to Memphis to go live with his parents, essentially. Uh, due to his passion um, and photography, you know, when he established himself in Memphis, uh, he began doing his photography on popular streets, right, that were there, like, you know, uh, Beale Street to take his photos, you know, um, you'll see a lot of his stuff on his website where he actually does a wonderful introduction of himself and he says, hey guys, my name is Tyree D. Nichols, I am an aspiring photographer, well, I mostly do this stuff for fun, but I enjoy it very much. Photography helps me look at the world in a more creative way. It expresses me in ways I cannot write down for people. I take different types of photography anywhere from action, sports, to rural photos, to buys of water, and my favorite, landscape photography. My vision is to bring my viewers deep into what I am seeing through my eyes and out through my lens. People have a story to tell. Why not capture it instead of doing the norm and writing it down or speaking it? I hope to one day let people see what I see and to hopefully admire my work based on the quality and ideals of my work. So on that note, enjoy my page and let me know what you think. Your friend, Tyree D. Nichols. You can actually find uh, his photography at this website, uh, but it will be in the links below just so you know. Um, I mean, Tyree was on, on his journey, you know, he was on his journey. However, on his way home, January 7th, 2023, around 8.30 p.m., uh, on Castlegate Lane, uh, during a traffic stop, <laughs> little did any of his loved ones know that this would lead to his untimely death. Um, I will only play a portion of the video downloaded from City of Memphis uh, Vimeo uh, account. 140-pound uh, lightweight Tyree would actually be perceived by five officers on the suspicion of reckless driving on an intersection of Rains Road and Ross Road. So he is physically dragged from his car, and then that's where the assault begins. Instinctually, a uh, response apparently from the specialized street unit called Scorpion. He would be assaulted and his fight or flight instinct would kick in, right? Wanting to live. He tries to run away uh, from the vehicle, but 
after being assaulted, Tyree um, was complaining of shortness of breath, you know, a common phrase heard in these situations. Um, his assault continues and then Tyree breaks free for like a second, but the officers would catch up to him and beat him straight for three minutes. He would experience a severe beating seen on camera by five officers. In the video, you can see where Tyree was held down. He was punched repeatedly. He was kicked in the face multiple times. He was beaten on the back with the baton while he, while he was restrained. Uh, he was also held in place, barely able to stand and continued to be beaten severely. The police brutal beating of Tyree now is being compared to the 1991 Rodney King beating. Um, three days later, Tyree was succumbed to his injuries of extensive bleeding caused by the severe beating. Um, the Memphis Fire Department would fire three of their employees for not providing adequate medical aid after arriving to the scene and two additional officers were also relieved of their duties. Um, so when you arrive to a scene, they're supposed to provide some kind of medical aid, see exactly what's going on, see if there's bleeding, blah, 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 take care of these things. They did not. Um, protests actually now storm the country again, right? So for example... Um, the lack to provide medical basic life support is the key factor to the murder trial for the George Floyd uh, case, right? With former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, uh, who ended up being sentenced to 22 and a half years in prison. Federal investigators have opened up a civil rights investigation of Tyree's case, and the specialized uh, street unit, Scorpion, has been permanently disbanded. Permanently. The cries for Tyree's unjust uh, death has brought in President Biden and Vice President uh, Kamala Harris to urge Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, which has the main purpose of kind of basically kicking down police brutality. This act was actually introduced in 2021 after nationwide protesting began after the death of George Floyd. The legislation was passed in the House, but has not passed through the Senate as of right now. The more press this incident receives of Tyree Nichols' death, um, the louder the cries are for this specific act. Um, in layman terms, if this act is passed, it would ban no-knock warrants, Breonna Taylor, uh, police tactics like chokeholds, remove qualified immunity, which protects officers from civil legal actions, as well as a bevy of... Uh, training and investment programs for community policing around the United States. Tyree's funeral was held at Mississippi Boulevard uh, Christian Church in Memphis, Tennessee. The five former Memphis police officers that are seen on camera beating Tyree are Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justin Smith. They were all charged with two counts of official misconduct, one count of official oppression, one count of second degree murder, one count of aggravated assault, and two counts of aggravated kidnapping. The national protesting has caught the eye of social media and news and the government. Georgia uh, governor, for example, uh, Brian Kemp, has uh, apparently declared a state of emergency that allows up to a thousand National Guard troops to be deployed until February 9th of 2023 this year due to the city's recent unrest over the Stop Cop City occupied protests from George Floyd, which their goal is to stop construction of the Atlanta uh, Public Safety Training Center uh, by the Atlanta Police Foundation and the city of Atlanta. Um, and the unrest protest from the death of Manuel Esteban um, Paez Teran, who is you know, Venezuelan, but he's also the first documented case of an environmental activist being killed, shot by an officer in American history. Manuel was shot by a Georgia State Patrol officer during a raid of the Stop Cop City encampment on January 18th. 2023. In Washington, D.C., the Metropolitan Police Department activated their all sworn personnel. They are scared. The Biden administration spoke with mayors of different cities, right? Many cities, right? 
including obviously bigger cities, especially like Philly, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York City, offering assistance in the event of protesting. During the George Floyd protests, there was a rage felt in the hearts of millions across the globe, um, with fuel being poured in deeply from both sides, regardless of whatever your perception was, right? Everyone is scared. You know, there's a psychological link that was discussed by LSP Monk Jr. from Harvard University, Department of Sociology, called Linked Fate. Now, Linked Fate is uh, the feeling that what happens to one's group may indelibly shape one's own life is variously uh, compartmentalized, con conceptualized, sorry, <laughs> as an aspect of ethno-racial identity, expression of political solidarity and slash or sense of ethno-racial consciousness. In layman terms, there is a deep mental fear of a shared fate within a community. If it sounds strange to you or foolish and you're like, oh, this is weird, let me open your eyes up to this ideology, right? See through someone else's lens. This could very easily be applied to women's linked fate fear of when they read another news article of a man killing a woman for saying no, killing their wife, or perhaps seeing a woman being attacked uh, physically or verbally for politely turning down a man. Um, the rampant Asian hate crimes like Davis who attacked an 18 year old Asian college student going to school with no interactions or the old lady who was beat in front of her lobby um with a shopping cart native american women who go missing every year on a massive level um and as well as suffer from brutality as well when hispanics or south americans are confined to prejudice expectation and killed as well it is the recognition of oneself in others that you relate to like on a basic level and seeing that redundant fate over and over and over and over. It's maddening. It's, it's absolutely maddening. Um, and it's a sad case. It's a really sad case. Um, and I don't know what to expect, right? I don't know what to expect uh, future-wise. I don't know what that means. Um, people are going to try to utilize this for... Uh, social propaganda or or try to fight against this like well they're gonna say all lives matter or they're gonna say this or they're gonna, they're gonna say that whatever whatever the case may be i wonder and i worry what the future may hold right we got wars going on across seas um this stuff is excessively in the news and the truth is without the use of the internet or cell phones we now have, you know, it's a tool, um, access to these things instead of it just being uh, a local problem, if you will. Um, we're seeing what's happening to multiple groups of people or, you know, the LGBTQ community. Wait, LGBTQ TIA, sorry. Um, but like, you know, like going to a club and getting shot up because someone's attacking that specific group, it is a linked fate um when you look at all these things it's just kind of like like i really wonder what's next not um i i, I really want to know what do you you guys think of the situation did you watch all of the uh footage of uh, from the these particular officers, are you a first responder? How do you feel about this situation? Are you an officer um, and you are against this? And what are you doing as an officer to change these sort of things? Like there is a very thick blue curtain between the community and officers. And the truth is just we're really supposed to work as a team, right? Um, I mean... Police precincts have been around like what since I think the late seventeen hundreds or so, starting as like you know basic watchmen. And it, the truth is that's that's really how it started. Um, it was initially more about um, uh, if you got in trouble, that was like kind of like your punishment to do that sort of thing. And then of course there was the political era of policing, um, you know where there was a lot of heavy influence politically. Um, in regards to um, how it would be done. Uh, and then there's the community era where it was supposed to bring police and the community together. And 
it's like, it's just getting further and further and further and further and further and further and further apart. When does it end? When does the community and local law enforcement start to work together? What ideas do you have that you feel would like, all right, we do police reform. What are your, your ideas on how to fix it, how to thin the curtains so this way everyone's working together as a genuinely as a community? Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really sad um, to see this and to see the effects of it in, on... Um, in the long run and I mean it's a lot there's a lot happening across the world and I like, obviously I read too much news uh, <laughs> but seeing all of these these cases and then when it's redundant it almost gives um, the world the the feeling that it's not gonna change it's never going to improve um, I did see, uh, I saw someone discussing this, which I which I thought was really interesting because um, it, it sort of reminded me of the article about linked fate. And they talked about like how when one person of a particular community does something bad, how the whole community is actually affected uh, by it. Um, and they were talking about how particularly uh, white Americans um, don't have to, I guess in a sense deal with it because they can unclaim you know that that particular white person you know or like say well that was just uh i don't know ted bundy right it's just coming to name um and i thought the the video was actually relatively interesting and then it makes me wonder like okay is is that one of the things that i guess is a benefit where you don't have to think about the linked fate you don't have to worry about these things you don't walk around uh wondering like is something going to happen to me whether it's an officer or whether you're walking into a community and you're the only person that's there um it's it's intense um I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, I, I gotta find the the TikTok video if I want to put it into the references uh, down below. But what do you think? Um, how would you change everything? Uh, would you add something, particularly to the George Floyd Act? Um, if you work for the fire department or if you are an EMT or medic, uh, how would you have handled the situation, especially arriving to a scene, seeing there's an individual who's literally been beaten the crap out of um do you tend to them are you too scared to approach because uh, maybe you see these officers are acting like this and you're feeling like i may be next um how does that affect your relationship with officers and if you're especially if you're from uh, memphis tennessee um how does that affect your relationship you know in trusting uh local law enforcement especially when you see these things you know happening in the news do you feel like maybe it wouldn't affect you because you know uh you are another first uh responder um or do you feel like that wouldn't matter at the end of the day um but yeah i just wanted to cover this case because it's there's so much to be said and I just, I really want to know what, what you guys uh, think about this. I've been watching it every single day since the whole thing happened. Just like bang, 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 bang. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know I'm very sleepy looking. I don't have my anti-men lipstick on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I want to know what you guys think. Um, and express yourself freely. Be respectful in the comments, especially to each other. Um, I firmly believe in something that my mom used to tell me when I was little, which is you can say whatever you want as long as you're respectful, um, uh, initially. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, what do you think is going to happen? How do you think these protests are going to be managed? How do you think the, what the response is going to be? Uh, from the government do you think there will be reform and then if there is reform how do you reform the officers that are currently in the system who may be more uh, likely to do these kinds of things um how do you how do you fix that um i still firmly believe that i do think um there should be at least a team of psychologists not like just one inside of precincts in particular um just to monitor behavior just to um a system as well, right? Um, 
in case, you know, when something horrible does happen uh, to them and it's not under these kind of circumstances to assist them there so they always have a clear head when they go back out into the field. Um, I mean, that was just one of my ideas I had, you know, thought of and I was, because I was trying to figure out to myself, like, how did we get here? How do we get here? What happens um, uh, when you, you're dealing with something traumatic or you just got shot at? Do you carry that into your, your next your next job or, you know, whatever, the next call that you get in? Um, and does that lead you to make uh, inappropriate, you know, decisions? Um, I mean, I, I, I thought about it, obviously, you know, quite frequently. Like, how did we get here? Um, and how do we fix it? What is the source of the problem? Or one of the, which screw is it that's, you know, that needs a little bit of tightening. Um, but yeah, I, I really would love to hear everyone's ideas. And uh, once again, stay vigilant and stay safe.